Hi everyone, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy. And today I want to address the filling up and emptying out thing that I see happening during certain people's breath practices. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it useful? What's happening? Let's take a look. So I think this filling up completely and emptying out completely thing is kind of nice. It's sort of psychologically relieving, right? In fact, let's try a couple breaths like that together and don't even stress about your form. Just do whatever feels good to you. Really taking a nice full inhale and a nice full exhale. Here we go. One more, however you want to do it. <sighs> How do you feel? It's kind of nice, right? It's very relaxing. And on the one hand, I sort of love it. I think it's important that we take these full, expansive breaths once in a while to really get that full range of motion out of the rib cage, to test our level of expansion, and to put a little stress through those intercostal muscles, those costovertebral joints, and those sternocostal joints. So for sure, this is a use it or lose it scenario. So it's really good that we take these full, complete breaths once in a while to really mobilize the rib cage. And then also, whenever we tend to really tense up our muscles and constrict everything nice and tight, it tends to make it easier to then uh, let go of everything, to really drop our weight heavily towards the earth and really release tension that's being built up in the body. So from my perspective, to occasionally take two or three or five of these big expansive breaths in order to facilitate releasing tension from the body and to help prepare for a more focused meditative practice, I think it's a great idea and it feels very nourishing and supportive of that type of practice. But now, what if someone is breathing like that for their entire 10 or 20 or 60 minute breath practice? Or, I shiver to even think about it, what if that's what their daily breathing looks like? Or what if that's how they're breathing through the night? I do not like that at all. Why is this even coming up? Because some of you keep asking me to produce guided breath sessions with slower and slower cadences. And that's totally fine. I can appreciate that there are many of you out there who can easily breathe slowly, and that in fact, you feel so much more downregulated when you really slow down your breathing. But some of you asking for those slower cadences have also admitted to me that you're struggling with some amount of dysfunctional breathing. And so it just has me wondering, how are you actually practicing your slow breathing? What does that look like? This is sort of the main deficit of a YouTube channel, right? I can't be in the room with you and really get my eyes on what you're doing. So today I thought we'd go over once again the main bullet points that sort of define the most functional and most efficient breathing at rest from an oxygen advantage perspective. Number one, nasal breathing. You all know that I am team nasal breathing, particularly at rest, during sleep, and definitely during your slow breath practice. In fact, all of the guided breath sessions that I offer on my channel will be most effective if you practice them while nasal breathing in and out. Number two, quiet breathing. I don't wanna hear you when you're breathing. If I can hear you when you're practicing your slow breathing practice, then we need to work a little bit more on clearing the nasal passage, opening up the nasal cavity and the airways a little bit more, and also making your breathing lighter and less effortful. 
Heavy breathing is definitely not a functional and efficient breathing. And then number three, deep breathing. Not big breathing, not breathe in as much as you can, fill up as much as you can, and then not empty out as much as you can, but instead truly deep breathing. I want you guys to think of deep as geographical, as a location. You're trying to pull each breath into the lowest portion of the lungs. But deep doesn't have to be big. Deep doesn't have to be voluminous. Deep doesn't have to be effortful. Deep simply means deep. It means low. It means get the breath down here. Remember we did that whole video a few months ago on basic breathing mechanics? Well, maybe go back and take a look at that video again so that what I'm saying right now makes more sense to you. I'll be sure to include the link in the video description. So now I want to show an example just to really drive home what I'm saying. Let's say I guide you to breathe at six breaths per minute. This is a really lovely, slow breathing cadence. It is way slower than how most of us are breathing at rest during our day-to-day -day activities, and it comes with tremendous benefit. There's a few ways that we can breathe at six breaths per minute. I tend to like cueing at a four, six cadence, meaning in for a count of four and out for a count of six. Some of you love this cadence. I personally really love this cadence, but then others of you come to me and say, this cadence is way too fast for me. Okay, perfect. So hearing this feedback from you that six breaths per minute is way too fast makes me very curious to know how you are performing this particular technique. Are you following those bullet points that we just went over or are you taking matters into your own hands? My instinct, and I can be totally wrong about this, but my instinct is that if you're feeling that that four, six cadence, that six breaths per minute is a bit too fast for you, then maybe, just maybe, you're not breathing the entire time nasally, quietly, deeply, and lightly. Let's take a look at a few versions of the 4-6 cadence. If I breathe, for example, through a slightly open mouth, through slightly pursed lips, I'm going to feel as if I want to inhale much longer and exhale much longer. If I make it a big, full body breath and really activate all my muscles, I'm also probably going to want to extend my inhale and my exhale. As I was editing this video, I realized that I forgot to include an example. And so I'm just going to insert it now with a totally different background, totally different outfit, totally different day. I didn't even set up my tripod. I'm just kind of holding my phone right now. So it might even be a little bit shaky, but I just wanted to say this really quickly. If you are slowing down your breath a lot, a lot, a lot, and with total control, then I could see how you would want to take 
more than four counts for your inhale and more than six counts for your exhale. But at the same time, if you have that level of control over your breathing, then you should feel really comfortable being able to modify your breath appropriately to make that four or six cadence feel good in your own body. And so this brings me back to my original question. If you are doing that, if you are feeling like you're breathing slow and with control, but you want to breathe in more than four counts and out more than six counts, is it because you're trying to breathe in and fill up as much as you possibly can and then exhale out and empty out as much as you can, even if it is slow and controlled? And this is a genuine question, actually. I'm really wondering what other people's strategies are so that I can understand better where the need is. So if this is you, maybe your breathing looks a little bit something like this. You let me know. Okay, so I just wanted to add that in really quickly as a possible version three. Let's go ahead and take a look at version number four right now, which is the way that I typically perform my four six cadence. Now, if I really lighten my breath and make it less effortful, it is quite easy for me to feel totally satisfied by this four six cadence without feeling like I wanna take in or exhale out more air. Okay, so big caveat here. Light, easy breathing does not equal shallow upper chest breathing. I can make my breathing light, easy, and gentle and still bring it deep into my body. Remember, deep is a geographical location. Watch again. Notice that my breathing was totally nasal, totally quiet, totally easy, totally gentle, but it was really being activated from down here in the lower ribs. You could see that the breath was coming in deep, but it wasn't a big breath. It wasn't voluminous. It wasn't effortful. It wasn't audible. It was quiet, easy, and gentle, and the upper chest and the neck area were relatively still. I don't know if this was helpful or not. It is not to say that these other ways of breathing are wrong. They're just definitely not what I'm teaching and they're not totally aligned with my intention for the guided breath sessions that I share with you on this channel. So I hope this video at least offered a little bit of clarity. Let me know. And also, if you're like, uh, Tara, I am breathing nasal, slow, quiet, deep, and light, and I still want a slower cadence, then cool, let me know your ideal cadence and I will more than happily produce a guided breath session that suits your particular needs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Also, I have some new announcements for you. Number one, I just opened up my private online Be Like community to everyone. I normally charge a monthly fee to join the group, but right now you can get unlimited free monthly access when you use code BLCFREE at checkout. This is a private community that I host on my website that's designed to offer support and inspiration as we all travel down this path of holistic health. 
We have live monthly Q and A's in there, and you'll also get discounts on other BeLight products and services. So I hope you'll check it out. You just use code BLC free at checkout. And number two, I just recently launched the new Be Light store, which has a number of downloadable eBooks and audio files available. If you enjoyed today's conversation, for example, you might be interested in my 10 tips for refining and perfecting your breath practice, which is an entire ebook devoted to this type of discussion. So if you'd like to do something that helps to support the growth of Be Light while simultaneously doing something great for your own personal health and your own personal growth, then please check out the store. You can also find a few of those downloadable eBooks on my Buy Me A Coffee page. And then as always, please make sure you check out my free breath training called the Breath Basics Six Day Challenge and my deep dive into functional breathing called the Four Week Breath Bootcamp. And if you'd like to donate to my channel, I'm always so grateful for your generous offers. You may do so by visiting my Buy Me A Coffee page. You can find all of those links and more down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.